Warning, the following video will contain spoilers from the Supergirl episode, Fight or Flight. If you do not want anything spoiled or ruined for you, stop watching now. For everybody, oh, also, before I get going here, uh, please check out my other video uh, I recently posted about how an admin and a Flash group attempted extortion on me for showing my videos in their group. There's also a admin in a Supergirl group as well, so spread it around and check it out. Anyway, thank you. All right, for everybody else, hi guys, Dave here. Uh, and I gotta admit, I do like the Supergirl series. Uh, it hasn't grabbed me as much as uh, Flash has, but uh, it's still a good series in its right, and it's definitely trying to do its own thing, which I'm really loving. Now, one of the big mysteries that's going on right now is involving the head of the DEO, Hank Henshaw. Now, yes, he comes off as a powerful, arrogant prick who just flat out doesn't like aliens. So he's immediately suspicious of them, and he's having to, a hard time to warm up to them. So, what's going on? Now, especially what's going on, people are wondering right now, in the last episode, he had, as uh, something seemed to happen, he's starting to lighten up with Kara, his eyes as he turns you know, his back from Alex, glowed red. They also did a red glow on Fight or Flight with uh, dealing with Alex doing some investigation and trying to help Kara to stop the villain Reactron. Now, Greg Berlanti, one of the executive producers behind the show, is also doing Flash and Arrow, and these guys are amazing at taking comic book history and mixing enough just to keep you guessing, but also being able to throw something brand new in there to really offset people. It's compelling. It's very cool. So what is the secret that Hank Henshaw is hiding? Well, in the comics, we best know Hank Henshaw as the cyborg Superman. If you're wondering how this happened, basically picture the Fantastic Four, only done by the DC style. The group of four people tried to go up into a rocket, they get uh, exposed to alien radiation, come crashing down, they have powers. Unfortunately, their powers are killing them. Among the people affected are, of course, Hank, but uh, his body ends up disintegrating and he becomes able to possess and control technology and anything uh, electronic, computers, things like that. Eventually, uh, he starts to lose his mind after his wife dies, uh, after trying to go to see her in a robotic body he cobbled together. She went in shock. She, uh, he ended up, uh, actually, to get away from Superman, ended up, in the comic books, getting into the rocket that sent Superman to Earth. He took off, and years later, after Superman died, he was one of the four people that returned, this time as a cyborg. He seemed to have some uh, abilities and things, but his memory seemed to be gone. Now, it turns out that what Hank was doing was he actually had possessed the Matrix uh, that uh, uh, Superman was birthed in, and he was able to not only create Kryptonian metals and alloys, thanks to the technology from the ship, but also a copy of Superman's DNA, so he was able to replicate that part. Eventually, it turned out he'd be an incredibly powerful and evil villain. So, of course, with Hank Henshaw being cast, is that the case? Well... Things in the argument for this case is the fact that the DEO has actually had Supergirl's rocket for a long time and exposure to uh, various Kryptonian technologies that they're just now starting to reveal. They've had this in development, they've been working on it, but they've been keeping it under wraps. It's possible that something may have happened to Hank, he was exposed to the Kryptonian technology, and maybe he's already the cyborg Superman, and he's just keeping it under wraps. This could explain a certain xenophobia. But we have yet to see his full powers unleashed and things like that, so I don't know. But another possibility that people are wondering about is a very fun one that I would love to see. And this is that the red glowing eyes indicates the powers of another Kryptonian level superhero. In this case, Jean Jones, the Martian Manhunter. Jean's always been one of my favorites. I mean, he has many of the same powers that a Kryptonian would have. Flight, super strength, invulnerability, uh, x-ray vision, which he actually calls Martian vision. Uh, but he also has other abilities that Kryptonians don't have, such as telepathy. 
uh, invisibility, intangibility, shape shifting. I mean, he's incredibly powerful, but Martians have one inherent weakness, and it's a big one: fire. Uh, it, it, this has changed in the comics from time to time, but usually whenever he's exposed to fire or heat, Jean seems to become either psychologically shaken and doesn't do anything, or physically weak and, and loses his powers temporarily uh, in shock of it. This is because of a fiery plague that actually wiped out virtually every Martian. Uh, well, we're not sure what's going on with Hank. Now, if in fact there are aliens on Earth and something happened, if Jean wanted to take a disguise and to be someone close to the action, dealing with an alien threat to his new adopted world, uh, this would be a good place to do it. Also, it would not be good to have all that level of power and something as simple as a Zippo lighter being able to immobilize you and take you down. There are certain clues to this. Usually whenever Jean uses his telepathy, his eyes tend to glow red. When Hank was walking in a hallway, he stopped his turn, his eyes glowed red, and he realized that Alex was doing something. He checked it out. Now, it's possible that if he was the cyborg Superman secretly, that he, in fact, was reading the data stream that he was uh, that, that Alex was trying to skim. If he was Jean, or another Martian, he might have actually picked up her thoughts and read her mind. See, here's another thing that is possibly a clue. As I said, Martians have a vulnerability to fire. Now, Hank and the DEO are tasked with dealing with extra normal activity, in other words, alien threats. But when this was a superpowered human using uh, advanced technology, throwing out nuclear fire, he said, no, this is not my uh, responsibility, especially since this is powerful enough to have hurt Superman. So don't get involved, don't get involved. Could the fact that Reactron is throwing around nuclear radiation and essentially atomic fire be the biggest clue that he was reluctant to deal with a fire thrower if he had to deal with them? Interesting possibilities, wouldn't you say? Or, of course, it could be something else. See, in the current comic books in the New 52, uh, Hank Henshaw is not the cyborg Superman. Uh, there actually was one that was revealed, but it turned out to be uh, a new re like a retcon where Brainiac actually got a hold of Kara zor father and rearranged him to become the cyborg. So, I know, I know, it's a really schmucky move. But uh, there's evidence that could go either way, and it's just enough question, because Hank Henshaw is not the cyborg Superman in here. So what's going on? Are they retconning him? Are they changing him? What's happening? Is... Uh, Hank Henshaw secretly the cyborg already? Or could he be Jean Jones the Martian Manhunter in disguise? What do you guys think? Or is there something else entirely different that I haven't covered yet? All these possibilities are out there and Greg Berlanti is a master when it comes to taking all this huge comic book history and throwing it in there and even though we may see a lot of similarities and things that we're used to it still keeps it fresh and keeps us questioning. So, what side are you on? Do you think that Hank Henshaw is secretly already the cyborg? Or could he be the Martian Manhunter? Please, like, comment, subscribe, share, pass this bad boy around. Let's get a discussion going and see what you think. Until next time, guys, Dave signing out. Peace. Yum, yum.